Welcome, everybody. All, all three of you. No, I'm kidding. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming. I'm Kim McMahon. I'm with the RISC V project, one of Linux Foundation projects. And I'm going to talk today about some of the techniques and things that we have done to grow using visibility and community uh, as we've been uh, really accelerating here with RISC V. So a little bit for the people who don't know what RISC V is, we are a global nonprofit, as I mentioned. We are one of the Linux Foundation projects, and we focus on open hardware. Um, we are the part of open hardware that is the um, instruction set architecture. So what is an instruction set architecture? Uh, it is basically a model of how the CPU talks to the software. Um, and so there's a couple of them that you've probably heard of, x86, right? x86 is a, a CISC uh, architecture. ARM and MIPS are a RISC architecture. We are the open, open architecture for the RISC solution, which means, so if you're going to buy an x86 chip and put it in something, you're probably going to pay a license fee and you're probably going to be limited on what you can do. Ours is open source, so you take the instruction set, you choose the extensions that you want. Extensions would be things like add and subtract or memory loading or whatever. And, and then you put those into your, into your computer board, into your chip in your computer board. So the benefit of the open source is you get to choose what you want and then you license it yourself. So I, I did put a couple drawings up here. I thought they were really funny. I asked um, Akira. Akira, if you're listening, um, our wonderful ambassador, I said, hey, do you have a picture of an instruction set architecture? So he sends me this thing on the left, and I'm like, I have no idea what to do with this. So I put it in there because I think it's hilarious. And then I found the really simple one on the right that really is saying that the whole, what we're doing is we're managing that layer there between the hardware and the software with an open source project. So we've seen some really incredible growth over the last five years, and I'm going to just show a couple charts to try to show you, to demonstrate what this growth is. One of them is in our members. Um, this is uh, in the number of cores or processors, RISC-V processor, I've put my glasses on to make sure I see that, um, CPU cores by 2025. This number is 80 billion, and I, it's up from, I believe it was 50 billion when they did the survey last year. And when you think of a core, it's virtually in every single thing that we use. It's in your earbuds, of course, it's in your phone, it's in your refrigerator, if your refrigerator talks to you. Um, and in, in the case of my laptop, it has multiple cores, right? So we're seeing this incredible growth of cores within RISC-V. And then on top of it, you, you, know, you just don't run hardware, you need software. And that is expected to grow to over a billion dollars in this same sort of time period. People writing software applications and extensions and et cetera to work on the RISC-V. So I showed you these numbers because I wanted to set the stage for how we are expanding. Um, we start, when I joined the organization last year, we had, um, we had two people. We had our CTO and a program manager. We, this, excuse me, CEO, Clista back there, and our program manager. We added a CTO and myself around the same time of year. And then we added three more technical headcounts, a marketing headcount, a community learn headcount. And so I come into this role and I'm, building on what they have all done, you know, what, what, this team, what this team of two and Ted on the marketing committee as a volunteer has been doing for RISC V. So I had a relatively blank slate when I, when I looked at building out our visibility and our community programs on how we were going to show our adoption and our growth and grow membership. Uh, so, and the things I'm going to describe to you in this presentation are things that I did with RISC V. You can do these at, on another project. You can do these as, a, as your own organization. And um, you can do these as a business unit, if you have a business unit launching. So the things that I'm going to describe that we do, you can incorporate that into almost anything that you're trying to launch. So the first thing that I think we, uh, that we always need is a plan. And because you, you need a plan, you kind of need to know where you're starting and where you're going to go um, so that you, you put together, so you're, the activities you're doing make sense. So I, I have a friend, Ted, I already referenced him in the audience. Um, he, he has a new book, he's making me do this. 
<laughs> but he actually, he wrote this book, and it's a really great book. It's super simple on, you know, the seven steps for marketing simplified. And it's the things that Ted and I talk about. But as he says, to do marketing makes no sense. Uh, to do marketing just for marketing's sake, sake makes no sense. It's a waste of time. So if you know Ted, he's never won the mince words. He's a great guy. You should meet him and talk with him. But what, what we're really saying, or any experienced marketer is saying, is that, like I mentioned, you need to know where you are and where you're going so that you don't do a bunch of activities that just don't make sense. So, um, so I started out here with our organizational goals, our goals that Calista had set our risk five organizational goals, and then I put together my visibility and community plan. So I have a couple examples to illustrate this. Um, one of them is the, the goal from Callista, grow membership, grow, grow product revenue, and that whatever. And then when I look at the things I was going to do, I was going to retain our current members, you know, look at satisfaction, add new membership through maybe personal outreach, cultivate a pipeline for membership, deepen member engagement, you know, keep that retention going, things like that. And then the little green box on the right were some specific things that I was doing within my strategic plan, which is the darker green box on the left. But another example, deepen community engagement. So best practices, geographic and advocate-led programs, alliances, for example, and then put together with part of that plan was on the right how am I going to do that and another the third example and these slides will be available so you can take a look if you want to copy my marketing plan but um, uh, broaden visibility and adoption so you know talk about member successes talk about technology progress uh, what is going to be our PR plan all those kinds of things so we're taking this broad goal bringing it down to the area that I'm responsible for, and then talking about how to do it. So um, the, our plan will also have metrics. You know, there are metrics associated with this. And I didn't go into detail here with that because it can be a long conversation. But you know, there are metrics I was driving towards, percent membership growth, percent membership re retention, for example. So if you want to talk about metrics, I'm happy to, you can um, get me on Twitter. My Twitter handle should be somewhere at the bottom of some of these slides. Or find me here at the conference, and I can talk through metrics with you. So the next thing we did was messaging. And they had, MERS 5 had good messaging as what I'd like to say is a scrappy startup. Um, they used words like disruption and revolution. And note, these are not the images we, that were being used in the marketing. But, um, you know, once, when we're looking to mature and step up from a, more of a startup to proving to the world that we are a viable go-to-market product, we needed to up our game with our messaging. So, the first thing we looked at was, well, what, what do we want people to know about us? So we want people to know that we are changing computing for the foreseeable future, that open collaboration is important, that we want them to know about the technical components of the ISA and the extensions, and, um, and that we, you know, RISC V is cementing the strategic foundation of supercomputers. So we up-leveled our messaging a little bit, and um, this is what we are using now. You'll see this kind of all over our materials. Next year, uh, I, we will probably change this again, you know, as, as we look at where we are currently in the market and what we, need, what we should be saying after that. So, okay, we have our plan, we have our messaging, time to get started. Well, but in reality, I got started right away. And, and that, I, how I did that was with social engagement. I mean, the plan is really important, but you're not going to halt all of your visibility and community activities while you wait for your team to build out the plan. So, like, as I mentioned, started with some low-hanging fruit, social engagement, you know, talking to people on Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, and while I'm hanging out, watching what's going on on our social media channels, I am finding really great content that was written by the community, and we're back to sharing that on our website. So we did start with some things that that we you know, start with some things right away as the plan was being built. So I just really kind of wanted to point out, yeah, you, you can do two things at once. You can execute and plan it together. So when I started, we were resharing community news on our website, publishing a few blogs. But if we're going to up our game. We, we needed to make a slight change, and that was 
high quality, relevant, timely community content that we're publishing on our blog and in the news. And um, these would be new products, things the community hasn't heard about, innovations, and as we were finding this, you know, we're not only getting excited, but the community's getting excited because they're seeing just this amazing growth, growth with RISC V. So, and then blogs. Blogs are awesome, but for us, we wanted content above quantity. We didn't want to publish a bunch of blogs that were not great. We wanted to make sure that we were publishing, I think we're losing it, huh? We were, oh, okay, that we were publishing really good content that the community was, was watching. There's not sales pitches. They're not just regular stories. They are really exciting stuff and kind of finding those hidden gems. And we had been, so we have been update, providing this content on our website, and our web metrics show that, um, that we're getting a lot more people coming to our website looking at Risk 5 as being the, re the place to find content on that topic. So for po social, we were posting regularly, we were posting good content. We had um, an outsourced team that was working with us on the content. When we added team members, we brought in a lot more engagement, and we also up-leveled up our social posts. We were talking more about the product, more about RISC V, we're more technical about it, and doing a lot of resharing. Now, and as we were engaging, the metrics that we saw in that is we were at about a 1% of an engagement rate before I joined. We're now at 1.6%, which is just awesome. And then what we were finding is we were sharing, sharing things, we're finding things on Twitter. We're putting it in the news. We're resharing that in the news or, or that blog on Twitter. And then it's getting reshared again, and then we're resharing it. I mean, we were just finding this really great circle of sharing and posting of content going on. Um, so amplification of technical progress, and um, these slides are not going to totally match up, but they will all, all make sense when I finish this paragraph. But um, that's where you're really going to change the game is when you have somebody sharing their successes. And anybody who's been in marketing for any length of time knows how hard it is to get, get customers to talk about their product successes, which is where, you know, <laughs> that, that rock picture came from. So I have a couple things for you all to think about. One word, persistence. I mean, you just got to keep asking. You know, if you find that good case study, just keep asking. Can I publish it? Can I help you write it? Do you have any information? Can you share it with me? I'll write it for, for you to look at. Like anything, just kind of stay in their face and so that you can tell that story. And then the second thing is why it's good for them. So case studies, um, they may not, end users may not want to share it or your vendors may not want to share it because they're giving away proprietary information. But actually, it is good if they share it because it brings more awareness to the product, which more people buy, which brings more awareness to their products as well. So telling them why it's positive for them will help you get those case studies. Okay, let's see. I don't know what's going on there. There we go. So. Events. Events um, have been really interesting. So who's excited that we're all back in person now? People at home, you can raise your hand. Sorry you're there. Um, but then we also have a lot of people who can't travel because of restrictions or who don't, aren't comfortable traveling. So it's an interesting time for anybody doing marketing and trying to do events. Now, the last thing I wanted to do was one more long form virtual event. I was not, I mean, we did the, we did one in, you know, September of 2020, that's when they were still good. People were going, they knew they had to get that content, but it, I just saw it just dropping off by the end of the year. People did not want to sit there all day long. They're going to wait till it goes to YouTube and plan to watch it and maybe watch it and never, you're nodding, you know exactly what I mean. So what, what we did instead of a long for virtual event, we, I mean, we looked at what's going on and we pivoted. We did these, what we call these short form, single topic, virtual events, that's these forums over here on the right, and they were super successful. We did one on security and developer tools and embedded technologies and vector, and um, I got sponsors for those events because we are a nonprofit, so my goal is to get a sponsor to pay for the cost of whatever we're doing, and they were super successful. We had over 50% of the people join, and the sponsor got those leads, so by by pivoting and looking at something that the community wanted to hear about, that 
and, and then those are high quality leads that come in. So whether you're doing your own business or whether, you know, in, in this case, giving it to a sponsor, they got leads in this, this area that they could cultivate um, in the security area, for example. It's not like they're going through their whole OSS list and trying to figure out, qualify a lead and figure out what you're going to talk to them about. So that was a good pivot. Um, and my pitch, Risk 5 Summit, I think I have it over there on the left. It is December 6th through 8th. If anybody wants to learn about more about joining us, at, joining us at Risk 5 Summit, stop by our table in the Exhibition Center. So community, there's, there's a lot on this slide, and there's a lot for me to read here. I'm going to put my glasses back on. But um, community programs are about get, getting broader participation from the community, not from the people you know, but really extending beyond the people you know. Thank you, Gordon, for nodding. Um, deepening engagement with the existing community members. We have people that, that are contributing and really you know, showing appreciation for them and getting more engagement from them. But and as while we are also growing more community members to participate, and then finding those advocates who are your fans. So I know we have a lot of fans, but how do I find them and how do I engage them and take them to the next level? So I have a couple on that left there, the how, a couple steps. Good, credible, con authentic content for your technical audiences and a good getting started guide. That's one of the ways that you're going, you know, it's kind of like two ends of the spectrum. You get people trying to use your stuff and then people who already are. But that's how people are going to get engaged in the community because if they know where to go and where to find information. Um, like, for example, our technical team, they hired a doc writer to create uh, templates for documentation and clean up our existing documentation. We have upped our game. Um, we, we are on a never-ending update to our getting started page. Anybody who's in market, oh, I got more nods. Yeah, like you never, like th that never works, right? <laughs> it's, you're always trying to improve your user experience and your getting started page. So we're doing that. And, um, and then our technical team, do I have one minute? Okay, our technical team now has a wiki and uh, that's where they go and find information. Um, that, wow, that went quick. Evangelism. Can't do it alone. We have 12, oh, five minutes. Okay. We have 12 ambassadors. We just added two more. We added our first female ambassador. Yay. And um, uh, so those are our advocates. And if you, Drew Festini is one of our ambassadors. He's here at the event. If you have a chance to talk with him, please do. He's amazing. Um, and and they, they, they help a lot. They are on social. They're talking to people in the industry about Risk Five. So get that advocate. Um, outreach programs such as we have um, a technical collaboration at, with Chips Alliance. So I work a lot with Chips Alliance, another LF project, to promote what we're doing with Risk Five and to promote what they are doing with Risk Five boards, for example. And then um, doing events, developer conferences, hackathons, meetups, bringing the community together. One of the ideas I have is to do a meetup with maybe people who are inter interested in blockchain. We just launched a blockchain SIG. It's, it's, there's a lot of chatter going on about that. So maybe we do a meetup with just blockchain, not just risk five blockchain, but partner with Hyperledger, for example, and get blockchain enthusiasts together and talk about what their issues are. So really kind of thinking outside of the box on event, uh, things you can do to get the community talking about your stuff. So. The end result, you know, that you're always going for is to grow that community, make sure everybody feels welcome and included and safe, that they have a place to come and share what they think about your product, in our case, what they think about Risk Five. Um, come to us for information and, you know, be in that boat with us. Get a, they, they're excited to be there helping to make this a success. So um, that went really quick. Oh, there we go. So, the importance of diversity and inclusion. Um, from what I experienced so far in our community, it is, it's pretty low. I know it's better in some of the other tech areas. Uh, and, but it's definitely something that needs to be improved. And when you, when you talk about improving diversity, you know, why? What's in it for me? And the chart on the left shows that you know, when you have a more diverse team, your um, innovation, improves and communications and your documentation like things just improve improve all around the board because you have diverse thought 
So there, that's why you do it. And then I pulled this chart on the right, and I just thought, I just kind of scratched my head that the difference between how men and women see issues in tech was just really kind of mind-boggling to me. So we, we had just launched, and I have a talk at 12.25 today. We just launched the Open Hardware Diversity Alliance. And this is precisely what we're trying to do. We're working with the other open hardware communities to try to provide programs and learning and tools to, to bring um, more diverse faces into the open hardware community. So um, you can check that out. Um, you can also uh, go out to the uh, website, diversityhardware.org, if you want to help and join. Um, so bottom line, diversity is important. It's going to help you with that innovation and diversity of thought. And in summary, this is where you take a picture if you want. <laughs> anyway, in summary, your strategic plan, know your value for your message and with strong messaging. Make sure you have good content. Social, don't just, don't just sit back and watch. Get out there and share and amplify. Um, make sure you're talking about your successes, such as te a product successes and te technology successes. Do events that make sense. Don't do an event just to do an event. Do, do something where you're going to be in front of the audience that you want to be in front of. You know, think about your community programs and um, some diversity. And with that, I'm done. I'll take some questions if you want. But do come visit us in the Sponsor Showcase. Calista, model your t-shirt. Come pick up the most gorgeous t-shirt. We're going to win best conference t-shirt. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Particularly though in adoption, what are some of the kind of the sort of the next level down metrics that say RISC five is succeeding in important projects? Calista, do we have those charts? I know you were working on yours. You have a talk at five twenty five. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so Gordon asked um, about adoption, and Calista was sharing. These charts are showing the cores, but that I think you said 23%? Nearly, nearly, nearly a quarter. Nearly a quarter of, of products are going to have a risk 5 core in, it in the next two? That's, that's oh, already happening. And her and our technical person, Stefano, have a talk at 520, 425. Four. Four. Whatever. <laughs> I'll be there. I'll follow Calista. It's at 4 o'clock. And she'll be going through those numbers. And those numbers are also on our website. Uh, if you go to our About page, uh, we have these charts as well as other charts. And then after this conference, I'll be updating with the new information that we've gathered. So. Yeah. So we are wrapping up. If you have questions, like I mentioned, um, if you want to talk diversity, come at 1225 to 502. If you want to talk with Calista and Stefano, what room? I don't know either. But I can tell, we can tweet it out. And uh, yeah, thank you all for coming. I'll be around. <laughs>